Chapter 21 Decompressing On that early August day, as I sat in the conference room at the West Dallas Police Department and was briefed on the whole matter by Nick Pye, the captain of the station came in and told me that in all his years of police work, this was the weirdest case he had ever known. It was probably the weirdest thing I had ever experienced, too. When Becky and I left the church, all we wanted to do was establish a life for ourselves. I understood that Dave would be pissed off at me because I had left. Okay, fine, but I did not want to live that life any longer. I wanted to restart my own life. However, I did not want to cause any trouble for the church. My granddaughter, Jenna Miscavige Hill, has written a book that explains what it was like to grow up in Scientology. Beyond Belief, My Secret Life Inside Scientology and My Harrowing Escape. And it was one hell of a way to grow up. The way David treats people and what he has done to the church are not the same as the philosophy of Scientology itself. A philosophy is just a philosophy. Nearly everybody follows someone else's way of dealing with life or makes up their own or creates a blend of the two. Scientology was Hubbard's philosophy, and I found a lot of things in it that were helpful. Emotionally, David's words to Duane over the phone shook me up a lot. I had been involved in Scientology for more than 40 years and had a high degree of certainty about what Scientology had done for me and what I had seen it do for David, my family, and many others. I had seen Scientology do a lot of good for people. Yet, at home later that day, and in the days and weeks that followed, the foundation of my certainty developed some mighty big cracks. Hold on a minute, I thought to myself. There is something really, really wrong here. That he would have me followed and allow me to die. This guy treasures his position of wealth and power above the relationship with a father. That was hard to face. This episode with the P.I.s began my search into what was really going on with Scientology. I started investigating Scientology itself and looking at L. Ron Hubbard. Up to that time, I had thought of Hubbard as more or less like a god. Here was a man who had imbued me and many others with useful knowledge about life. And that was great. I spent nearly 27 years in the Sea Org many of which were miserable, but because of my attitude toward life, I do not look back upon those times with a woe-is-me feeling, but as simply an experience. It does not pay to play the victim. At that point, well, you are a victim. As you can imagine, my viewpoint began to shift. I tolerated all those things in the Sea Org because I felt I was doing the best I could to help others, Many people become interested in Scientology because they have something personal they want to deal with. But when they see it working for them, they think, hey, this is something that might help a lot of people. Let me do everything I can to help. I began reading stuff about L. Ron Hubbard that I found on the Internet, about his marriages, about how he took ideas from other philosophers without properly crediting them. The clincher for me, though, is David's doing— Today, Scientology is about strong-arming people out of their money. What the hell is this? Fundraising? The word has a positive connotation for charitable organizations, but in today's Church of Scientology, it means something for nothing. And that's all it means. That really underscores why I wrote this book. I realize that by writing it, I am giving up my anonymity, something I treasure. In my younger days, I dreamed about being a famous musician. But as the father of C.O.B., I became thoroughly disabused of the idea. The church used to hold large events at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. Afterward, the crowd would congregate in an adjoining hall to buy whatever books, lecture series, or courses had been released during the event. I would want to go see Becky, who would be selling, but invariably I'd be stopped every few feet by people who wanted to shake my hand and say hello. It would take me twenty minutes to make it to the far end of the hall where Becky was. Not that I was famous outside of Scientology circles, but you can imagine what it is like for famous people. 
You become stuck in a spot. You can't just float freely through your life. That's not for me. Much as I cherish my anonymity today, I must do something, because the Scientology movement under David has morphed into a money-grubbing organization. No expansion has occurred that any Scientologist would recognize as such, by which I mean people being helped through auditing or by training to become auditors. Rather than concentrating on the substance of Scientology, the Church today is focused merely on appearances, it just demands donations to fund fancy buildings, which other former church members have documented as being largely empty. I always drop a couple bucks into the Salvation Army pot, because that organization actually does things to help the less fortunate. The Church of Scientology, as it presently operates, does not help anyone, so far as I can see.